the best thing for Manning is exactly what Gary Kubiak is doing. It's the same way. I was just in uh, Oxnard, California with the Dallas Cowboys. Tony Romo, who's you know a mere babe at 35 compared to Manning at 39, uh, told me that a, that a huge key for him staying healthy for the whole year last year is that every Wednesday he just simply didn't practice. And I think you're going to see Gary Kubiak have some enforced sittings, you know, for Peyton Manning. You know, he doesn't want him to practice four days in a row, so he'll sit that fourth day. And I'm sure he's going to address some stuff during the year with him, like taking Wednesdays off or something to that effect. But I think, look, there's nobody who wants to practice and who wants to do all that stuff more than Manning, obviously. But I think it serves two purposes. Keeps Manning fresher than he would be, and it allows Brock Osweiler the opportunity, first of all, to get more comfortable with the first unit offense. And secondly, it allows John Elway, Gary Kubiak, to be able to see, is this guy our quarterback of the future whenever the Manning era ends? Peter, you've been to a few camps. You're going to a few more after today. Uh, you know this league as well as anybody. When you look at the Broncos roster, where would you say they sit right now? And I, and I guess what I'm asking is, are they a Super Bowl contender? And how serious of a Super Bowl contender are they? Absolutely a Super Bowl contender. Uh, I think their roster is strong. I think that... Uh, the balance of power in a lot of ways in the NFL. Um, you know, there's so many good teams out west now, and that hasn't always been the case in recent years. Yeah, you know, you got New England, Baltimore, Green Bay. They're obviously top five teams in the NFL right now. But then you go Denver, you go Seattle. I think Arizona's a sleeping giant if Carson Palmer plays 14 to 16 games. Um, and so I think Denver, if it stays healthy, if Von Miller and DeMarcus Ware can be the kind of outside <clears throat> rushers that, uh, that uh, obviously Wade Phillips needs in his defensive scheme, I think it'll just be pheno a phenomenal year for them. But those are a lot of ifs. The last if, obviously, is, you know, has any contending team ever had started a season with a left tackle, left guard, and center who've never played before? That is going to be a challenge. That's why I wouldn't be a bit surprised if... You know, if somebody gets cut or if, you know, the Broncos are out scouting preseason games, if you see the Broncos trade for somebody's left guard uh, sometime in the next two weeks before the start of the season. The, Indian the Indianapolis Colts probably made the biggest splashes in free agency during the offseason. Do you think those signings have put them over the top? or are they just not strong enough defensively and their offensive line still isn't very good? Well, I mean, I was in Colts camp and you're right. I mean, I think they're really happy with Trent Cole, the one guy who they really, I mean, they're thrilled with Trent Cole. Um, and they think he's gonna really upgrade them at a desperately needed pass rush position. But, you know, the last three times, the Indianapolis Colts have played New England three times in the last 20 games. And in those three games collectively, uh, they've allowed over 600 yards rushing and over five yards per rush. They have not addressed their uh, rush defense very much. Now, you know, they want uh, the stand, the, you know, the defensive ends to be great run defenders. They're counting on Arthur Jones coming back from a subpar year and being one of those run stuffers, but I still don't see it. I think Indianapolis is gonna have trouble stopping the run at key times, and if they do, then whatever game that is, Andrew Luck's gonna have to put up 35 points because you saw what happened in the AFC Championship game. You know, the Patriots were unstoppable on the run, possessed the ball, and every time Andrew, Lick, Andrew Luck touched it, he knew he had to score a touchdown. Peter, you mentioned the Patriots. They're always a team of interest around here for obvious reasons. Um, I'm not going to ask you about the flake yet. I'm going to give you a break on that one. But I do want to ask you about how good the Patriots will be this year. W Woody Page and I talk about this all the time on this show. We both believe with the loss of all those cornerbacks, whatever happens with Brady, um, still not a very 
deeply talented team at the skill positions, although Brady tends to make it work every year. Do you believe the Patriots will be just as good as they've been the last couple of years, or might they take a half step back? I think they take a half step back. Um, I totally agree with you about the cornerback situation. Just remember back to the last play that mattered in the 2014 season. The Seattle Seahawks have a second and goal from the one. Uh, the Seahawks surprisingly um, run a stack of two receivers, Jermaine Curse and Ricardo Lockett, to the right-hand side. They send Doug Baldwin, their most reliable receiver, in motion to the left. Darrell Rivas follows Doug Baldwin. So you knew that they're not going to Doug Baldwin. Okay, so what happens when they go to the stack at the right-hand side? They run into Brandon Browner, 6'4", 221 pounds, the biggest cornerback in the NFL. And he prevents Jermaine Curse from basically running a pick play on Malcolm Butler so Ricardo Lockett would be open and catch the winning touchdown pass. So that's a long way of saying gone Darrell Rivas, you know, to the New York Jets, gone Brandon Browner, he's gone to the New Orleans Saints. In their place, the aforementioned Malcolm Butler and a cast of thousands who we don't know if they're any good or not at the other corner and who plays nickel for him. You know, uh, so I think when you look at the Patriots, they've got a lot of questions in the secondary. And believe me, I think Belichick is as good as anybody who's ever coached at changing on the fly and figuring things out in the secondary. Don't get me wrong about that. But I do think that talent at some point has to be considered and right now the Patriots talent in the defensive secondary has taken a big hit from the talent that won the Super Bowl last year. So essentially the three teams that I think a lot of people think have the best chance to come out of the AFC the Broncos, the Patriots and the Colts and you've addressed all of them all of them have question marks and challenges. With that is there another team or one of those three teams that you think has a chance to come out of the AFC? I'm probably picking the Ravens to win the AFC. Ooh. Um, I think the Ravens, as they're constituted right now, are better than the Colts. Uh, they're on equal footing with uh, Patriots, uh, in my opinion, right now. And they're on equal footing with uh, uh, happen if Peyton doesn't get his the in San Diego. Uh, what happens if he doesn't get the thigh bruise or the bad ankle or whatever else he has? When it comes to the teams playing at the level that we're talking about, it's a game of attrition. Who's going to be healthy on December 1st? You tell me which of those four teams is going to be healthiest on December 1st. And if you tell me that I'm wrong about the Indianapolis Colts stopping the run, then flip a coin with those four teams because any of them can make it. I just think I look back at last year and, you know, it's easy to say that, yeah, the Patriots won the Super Bowl. They were clearly far and away the best team. Patriots were behind Baltimore twice by 14 points in a playoff game playing at home. I like the Ravens a lot, and the Patriots deserve to win. Don't get me wrong, but I like the uh, Ravens a lot. And uh, I mean, if I had to pick it today, and I've got at least two, I got two weeks before I have to pick it. But if I had to pick it today, I'd pick the Ravens to come out of the AFC. Peter, as always, love seeing you out there. Appreciate your time, and you're going to be jumping on Twitter here and, and doing uh, a Q and A with all of your readers and listeners, aren't you? I'm going to uh, the uh, Twitter handle at the MMQB at 2.30 Mountain Time. So if you got a question or just simple form of harassment, come on <laughs> and, uh, and let's, let's get it on. All right. We will do that. Thanks, Peter, as always. Thank you, guys. Sports Illustrated. And that segment brought to you by Shanahan Steakhouse. Uh, it's a place where we go to eat all the time. It's the best restaurant in town. Doesn't matter if it's side dishes, appetizers, entrees, dessert. You're not going to get better food, better quality food, and a better atmosphere anywhere in the country 
better than Shanahan's Steakhouse. So go to ShanahanSteakhouse.com. Make your reservation today.